Michael is in charge of trimming. When allowed. When allowed. <laughs> and he's going to tell you about his trimming of a green giant. Go ahead, Mike. Okay, well, this is a green giant. There's a couple things that I look for when I'm trimming green giants. First off is I don't like weeds. Well, I do like weeds in the field, but I don't like weeds around the tree. That's a whole different story. But first thing I do is I go through and I eliminate the weeds. Then after I do that, I take a look at the tree real quick. I always want all of our trees to have one single leader. Multiple leaders make the tree not stable during snow load. So if you would look at this guy right here, this is an example. This guy has one and then two leaders. So when I, if I'm going to go do that one, you sub more in it by just going around and trimming that one harder than you would this normal one. But then you also have to finish it up a little bit too. There's a lot of other things that go into it, but we'll go back to this guy. Since this guy has one single leader, he's fairly well rounded, so you're pretty good to go with that. So the initial trim would be just a real light haircut at this size. It's probably about no more than three inches to no less than a half an inch. Kind of deal because you when you cut it you want it to feel it that you're cutting it this thing goes so fast that if you cut like less than a half an inch it's not going to do anything to it it's just going to grow right around it so you go through and you just cut just real lightly just to knock back a little bit of, of the growth so it makes it a little bit denser object is to try to fill it in so it's a little bit deeper or thicker of a plant all the way around uh, then after it fills in a little bit more then what you do is you let this one at this stage not trim this right here or if you do, you trim it just a little bit back to the next one. Nothing real hard to stunt the growth upwards. At this stage, you want it to grow real fast up and also try to make them thicker and fuller. The reason I try to make them thicker and fuller is that when you go through and you do weed control, if it's a thick, full plant, it doesn't get weeds in the interior inside of it. An example of that would be like you can see how this weed, this goldenrod, is right in the center of the tree. If you trim it, it makes it a thicker plant and you won't have those weeds in the center of it. So that's, it's just weed maintenance and that's something I don't like weeds very much around the tree. So we, we thicken them up, we make sure that they have one leader. And uh, we, at this stage we usually let the, the, <coughs> the, the central leader alone. But if you get to something like this where it's a little bit thinner, you can see in the inside of it, it's a little thin through here. Then what we're going to do is just we're going to make a nice little angle on it and we will trim the top leader on it just to encourage more growth in this central section through there but each tree should be looked at individually things you really should look for is trying to make them thick trying to make sure they have one leader and making sure there's not a lot of weeds around them. okay let's start with a tree that hasn't been touched okay and then we'll show you as you actually trim it from okay. when you walk up to the tree to the time the tree is done. Okay, well we'll just do this one here and we'll do that one too while we're at it. First thing you do is you cut the weeds out. That way you can see the tree. You look at it real quick and it's pretty much good to go. It's got a couple larger ones on this side. I know you can't see it from the camera. You need to go around making it a little bit more uniform. When you touch it, don't trick too much of it off. You don't want any real large ones falling, like growing up to the side. And then we go in through here and make a nice little angle on it. Like you can do it, I'm not going to do it. But if you really want a real fat, round ones, you can top it, but I don't think you really need to right now. Okay. Now this one here, I'll do this one. Again, you go through, you remove the weeds so you can see what you have. All right. So you can look at this one. This one has a definite second second leader forming but maybe a third right here so that's something we're gonna have to go through and cut a little bit heavier on remember earlier I said only three inches you can go four five six inches at this stage just to knock it back to make sure that that's not gonna be a leader and we're gonna leave this one probably go it's got a lot of new growth on it right now I don't really want to touch too much on it but we'll just go around now trying to make a little bit more rounder and when we do that, we will encourage the growing points in the inside of the tree to come out and make that a thicker plant for us. Okay, now Mike, what time of the year can people do this trimming? In case they, they, they don't want to trim them like today, which is July 22nd, okay. what other times of the year are appropriate for trimming the green giant? That's a good question. 
the answer to that comes into the fact of how this plant will grow. This, what I was taught in school was that this is called an indeterminate tree, which means it has an indeterminate amount of growth per year. Also meaning that it does not have buds. It has growing points. Like I said earlier, it had growing points. So um, when you trim these guys, you can technically trim these guys any time in the year that you want. I find, just in my experience, it may be different in different parts of the country, but if we go through and we trim them in the winter time, they usually start growing a little bit later in the spring. And if you haven't fertilized it, the tree and you trim it during the winter time, it usually does make the same, it makes it even longer on it. I find I like it to trim them when they're actively growing so that I can see how much growth rate's going to be on it. You can, but the real answer, textbook, textbook answer, that you're not going to be wrong with is that you can trim indeterminate type trees any time of year you want. Okay, and what time of the year does this tree actively grow? Well, this tree grows just about when the temperature is right, when the humidity is right, and there's sunlight there. So it's like... It likes to grow. Pretty much from spring to fall. And how fast does it grow per year if you do not trim it or you just let it grow and it grow, grows wild? in a well-fertilized area well, with if, adequate if, water and if light. If conditions are really nice, they can grow up to like two and a half. I don't know if I've ever seen three foot, and I don't know if I really want to see three foot, but they do grow two and a half without a problem. Maybe three if you got a really good irrigated field. I would say if you're going to get a new tree at this size <laughs> or smaller, you would probably want to see in a neighborhood of like a foot and a half of growth. You don't want too, too much growth because you want the tree to put roots out and establish itself. and You don't want a lot of growth when it's real young because then when little birds come over and land on it, they go and they snap the branch off a little bit. That does happen fairly often. You'll go out to a tree and you'll see a tree that's been growing and it's got like that much new growth on it. And all of a sudden at the top, it has a nice, nice L to it. That's because a little bird landed on it and it was not strong enough to hold it and it breaks it off. Some, like, it's just... Okay. And when, when when somebody plants this, your plant spacing here is what, about five feet? Yeah. For, for the nursery? And, half, like and what would be an ideal planting spacing for someone who just wants a rough screen? Um, I would say you could probably get away with a little bit closer than five, but it's one of those things like you can plant them and in like five years, five foot will be fine. In ten years, they may be growing a little bit heavy into one another. Like six foot would be fine. They, these guys are a big plant, so you can put them at seven, eight, nine foot without a problem. The larger the space you put it at, the longer it takes to fill in. So it's one of those things you have to like oh, weigh and measure. Weigh and measure. Would you say if you had a smaller lot but you wanted a large screen, you'd plant them closer, or if you have a smaller lot, you would want them further apart? Well, I would say you probably want them closer because in a smaller lot, ideally the thing to do is keep trimming them so they don't get too big. And you can trim these like a Leland Cypress where you trim them real every year, real dense, and they do take very well to that. So if you have a small lot, you're going to put them in. I would say you definitely have to trim them. And then if you're going to trim them, I would say you put them in a closer spacing just so that you can keep them thin this way. And not right. Them. Now, this, this plant is considered deer resistant. Is it deer proof? Well, it is not deer proof. It's deer resistant. It's very deer resistant. If you have a deer and it's starving, it will eat whatever it can eat. And it will eat the green giant, but it's not one of those things it really likes to eat. They'll eat it when it's really hungry. And another thing it does do is, is when the deer go in the rut and they start rubbing their antlers, they will start rubbing these guys. And that's another reason why I like to have them a little bit thicker. The thicker the plant, they tend not to like to rub them because the branches poke them in the eye. Right. That's that's now, this field that you're growing them in is surrounded by cornfields and in developments in the background. But you do have a deer fence. How high should a person's deer fence be? How high should it be? Wherever they can afford, but the taller the better. We still get deer inside here. Like we, we, when my dog and I came out, there was a, a buck in here. And we're not quite sure how I got in. And it, that's like an eight foot fence, so I guess it wasn't quite high enough. Do you think it was a buck or was it a reindeer? It might be Rudolph, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>